Hey. Hi, Tommy. I'm Joshua Ryan with Fandom Wire, and I'm very excited to talk to you. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. So I watched your documentary. I see you've got your uh, purple dinosaur back there. You've got the green colors and a awesome like blockbuster display set up back there. I'm really digging it. Yeah, yeah. I used to work at a video store named Watchdog Video, and when it went under, I, I got the, uh, the the shelves. So these like white bars are all right, you know, like an actual video store. And the green, I just, I liked the color green. It had nothing to do with Barney, but yeah, I have the Barney statue here. Right. You know, I never worked at a video store, but I always wanted to. I applied at a Blockbuster. I didn't get it, but I worked at a Publix that was in the same plaza. And when I was supposed to be out collecting carts, I would walk into the walk into the Blockbuster and I always thought I was fancy. So I wore like a, a suit and tie when I was collecting carts at Publix and people would think I worked that at the Blockbuster. So everyone was just asking me questions. I was passing out videos when I'm supposed to be collecting carts. Uh, so I didn't technically ever get to work in a video store, but I had a little bit of experience there. Nice. I worked at like a mom and pop one uh, and it was the best. You know, it was very much like clerks. You know, you locked it up and I went and got pizza. You know, uh, it, was, it was fantastic. And then I remember I worked at a Blockbuster video for a weekend. And all I did was I, I got the job, worked a shift, bought like, I don't know, five movies at 20% off, did five free nice. rentals, got the shirt and quit. <laughs> you know, I, was, and I still have the shirt. And I would wear the Blockbuster shirt at Watchdog Video. Uh, oh, really? Like, about the thing. It, was just, it was a fun, like, you know, I was a punk rock kid, you know? Yeah. You got the quick perks and then you ditched, took the shirt, took the movies. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, I just got to get this out and then, and then we'll move on to Barney, but do you have like a favorite movie from those like VHS 90s, early, you know, video store rental days? Like what's your favorite kind of like old school film like that? Yeah, here it is. I, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm wearing the best pants. But uh, I always thought this, this is one of my favorite movies that I like to show off. I'm not sure if you have video on this sort of thing, mm -hmm. but like you ever see this movie called A, a, a No Name Norm? I don't think I've seen this movie. <laughs> yeah, no one has, right? But it's so weird. It's like right? Michael Hall and this like gremlin-like character. Yeah. And it's just, the box always made me laugh. And I just, yeah. All right. So it's something to me... check out. It's kind of giving me like Mac and Me vibes. It's kind yeah. of like what it reminded me of. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think you're like, a couple years older than me, which would mean you uh, grew up in the the Barney era. Were you a Barney kid? Because you were here no. to talk about no, I love I you, you hate me. Right. Sorry, I cut you off. Uh, I was ten years old when Barney came out, so I was too okay. old for Barney. Yeah. Okay. So, did you have younger siblings or anything? Like, was this a thing no. in your house? No. What you know, I I didn't have like the best relationship with Barney. You know, I I was Cookie Monster. I was watching Ducktales. Right. You know, I was not a Barney's uh, fan so much so that when me and my friends were like teenagers and started like making our own like videos, like trying to pretend like we were funny and like mad TV sketches, I asked my aunt Ro to make me a, uh, a Barney suit so me and my friends could beat it up. Like my friend Tim Dean was Mr. Rogers and I was Barney and like I have videos of him beating me up and I actually snuck some of it into the. Uh, I love you. You hate me. Oh yeah. yeah it's, it's just, it's, it's very slight, but it's there, you know? So, so there was some Barney bashing. Yeah, it was, it was Barney bashing for the sake of us thinking we were funny and like, right. you, know, you would see it on different sketch shows and we're like, Oh, you know, we didn't have any, like we weren't funny, you know, but right. we, just we were. <laughs> and it's like, you know, doing this documentary, we're like, oh, why wouldn't we have done that? You know, it's like, Oh, it's cause it's like low hanging fruit. And we, we just yeah. Went yeah. So I'm curious how this came to be uh, a story that you wanted to put to film. Like, was this your idea for this documentary or was this something that somebody else had and you like wanted to grab it by the horns to take it or? No, no, no horns. Uh, it's, we, uh, I had, I saw this uh, news broadcast from 1993. I was like, an, you know, one of those like retro sort of nostalgia sort of uh, Instagram accounts. And they posted this news clip from 1993 about a university of Nebraska uh, and these college kids having a Barney bashing event. Right. And all these kids were like college kids were like smashing Barney, throwing darts at Barney, ripping up Barney, 
you know, and at the end, the newscaster was like, well, that's the future of our country right there. You right. Know? Like, no, we're kind of living in that future now, you know, yeah. like what if we explored the sort of level of hate we have now uh, through the story of Barney the Dinosaur. Like, here's a character that just wanted to teach us how to love, you know, and for the right demo, kids loved them, you know, yeah. but if you were like five years old to like whatever, you didn't. You know, and so like, what, what, why is that? Why do we hate the things we hate? You know, so that's where the idea kind of came from. Now, I know I had a younger brother who was one of these Barney kids, like loved Barney. So uh, like you, I was a little too old when it came out. Although I do remember there were times I would put on the show, like I hated Barney and he would turn it on and I'd be like, oh, I got to get out of here. But then I would like hang out in the hall and peek around because secretly I kind of dug it. That's so common. You know, that's so common. Like we would hear that stuff all the time with stories. and. And that's the thing. It's like, I do. I remember like at one point it was like, it was cool to not like Green Day. You know, uh, it was like during the Insomniac album. And uh, I was like, well, you know, you, you just, you, you pretended to hate Green right. Day, but Green Day is great. You yeah. know, like I love that album, you know? And like, it was just like, and you look back, you're like, why would I do that? It's like, and it's just like, you're, you know, a young kid and you just, you just think by hating this one thing, you're just going to fit in, you know, and you, or you know, I'm not a baby anymore, you know, like right. with regards to Barney, you know, so it's really interesting why we do the things we do and, you know, what it says about us. And so I'm guessing that was like your driving force behind this story was trying to kind of delve into why was there this hatred or why do people all cling yeah. to this single minded, uh, you know, way of thinking just to go with kind of the crowd? Is that kind of what you were going for? Yeah, love, hugs, and American rage, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and mean, that was it, you know? It was like, uh, I always found it funny that, you know, I had this Barney suit and we always did these things so that I always had that connection of Barney in that way. But yeah, I mean, it was like, why did we all, as a culture, not like Barney? I mean, like, the Animaniacs beat up Barney in, like, their <laughs> show, like, you know, Letterman's always making fun of him. And Letterman's great, but, like, you know, this is... Yeah. I, like full house made Barney jokes, you know? It was like, right. it, was, it was just this thing, you know? And and it had nothing to do with really Barney. It was just like what, you know, what it drew, drew out of us, you know? Now, I know everything from our childhood, you know, speaking of full house, fuller house, they keep bringing everything back and revamping it. Is there a, a modern version of Barney going on or is it done? Is it off air right now? It's, it's off the air. <clears throat> it, it got canceled in 2010, but it's still on. Like, it's like, right. you know, the great, th the interesting thing about the Barney property is that it changes audience like every four years, you know, right. it's like, so you can keep recycling these old shows. <laughs> oh, yeah. too. I mean, Selena Gomez and Demi Novato were both on like early 2000s Barney. Like, right. They, that's like, at their start. Um, but yeah, if you go on Peacock or, you know, any of the streaming spots, there's, there's old episodes of Barney still, still on. So now in the documentary, one of the big critiques that people brought up was that there was no real character to Barney because he was always so happy. He didn't really have any feelings or anything. So do you think that if it were to be revamped for, you know, I know it can keep getting new audiences the way it is, but if they revamp it for like a today's generation, that they could fix that and do you think it could achieve the same level of like magnitude that it was at? I mean, I don't think it could ever achieve the same height that it had because like no. in 1983, you know, it was what they called their Elvis year. Right. Um, it was just so huge. It was everywhere. They were selling out like 11 days of like Radio City Music Hall in a row. It was just, it was unheard of because there was such a market for that. You know, like Sesame Street did a show for children. You know, mm -hmm. Barney was like, here's our audience, you know? Right. And it, it, it's so much so that, you know, other people started, you know, playing to that crowd as well. You know, Nick Jr. becomes a huge thing. You have Blues Clues. You have all these other sort of shows that are now marketed right towards that. Teletubbies. Um, I mean, right now, the biggest character in very Barney-like is Blippi. You know, uh, right. Blippi, Blippi is a guy who just started making his own videos on YouTube, much like Barney started making their own tapes and just kind of became this like huge, huge thing after that. But even as big as Blippi is, it will never touch to what Barney was because it was, it was just less, there was less avenues right. um, to have anything, you know? 
Yeah, I guess that's a really good point with like today with the YouTube where anybody can just make their own content and anybody can follow anything, you know, kids are obsessed with YouTube right now. But yeah, back in the day, like you said, there was less ways to get that content out. There was le less ways to consume it. So if something did come out that worked, everything kind of like latched onto it. Remember Beanie Babies? My gosh, this kind of reminds me of how crazy Beanie Babies got and people were obsessed with Beanie Babies. There was actually a documentary that I watched on the Beanie Baby craze not that long ago. Yeah. Um, just wild stuff how something can just spin out of control with, you know, tickle me elbow and just become like a, a sensation. So it was really cool to see kind of the darker sides to it. Like everybody knows that there was Barney hate or Barney bashers and people had the Barney pinatas and would beat them up and stuff. But there were there were some really interesting and kind of darker ideas that this documentary does a really great job of bringing out did you learn more as you were doing the documentary or was most of this kind of you knew and wanted to explore the only thing we knew that barney it was that, that barney existed and we knew there was barney rumors and there was barney hate you know like we you know especially the urban legends i mean like the reason people make urban legends about kids show characters is, is crazy you know what right. i mean like uh, I mean, God, the stuff they made up about Mr. Rogers, Steve from Blue's Clues, Diamond mm -hmm. Car Crash. There's this urban legends about kids show characters like nonstop, you know, so right. Barney wasn't unique in that way. But, you know, um, so it was, it was, this, it, I didn't know, I didn't know Barney was made by two school teachers from Allen, Texas, you know, right. I didn't know like any of the backstory or any sort of like, you know, just, there's just so many interesting characters, you know, like, you know, one of the first person to play the bar the body of Barney was also a mime, you know. Right. Uh, some of the old writers of Barney and Friends used to write for Chuck E. Cheese. It's just like this is all this like sort of weird sort of 90s and just crazy stuff. So it was it was it was fun to sort of unravel that stuff because the Barney story isn't really something that's known, you know, right. um, between like Cheryl Leach creating it, some of the stuff that went went on with her family. Uh, and just like how it just kind of came to be is never, there's never been like an oral history of Barney, a book about Barney. So, you know, because I saw this Barney bashing video as it sent me down this rabbit hole and, you know, talking to Bob West, the voice of Barney, you know, you're just, you're just really doing a research mission and, you know, kind of putting it all together. So uh, speaking of the, of the research, I think people watch documentaries and they're so informative and, and you get the information you know in a really kind of tight narrative and people don't really think about how hard it is to put all that research and information and like how much time and effort goes into because this isn't your first documentary obviously how much time and effort goes into documentaries and this one specifically like what's that what's that a background lot, like a lot is the answer right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the, the, the thing is it's like so like this is my first documentary working with like a network right uh you know the bill murray stories i am santa claus waldo and weed were all movies i did independently that got on netflix or any other streaming sort of platform after that um you know and in doing so like i've done i've done you know years worth of research for documentaries sometimes that just never happened you right. know i could tell you so much about how to rob a bank yeah <laughs> i could rob a bank you know uh because i thought a documentary about people robbing banks would be interesting, you know? It probably uh, would be. I know, you know? <laughs> it's such a, it's such a, like, a, a you know, ballsy move to, to yeah. rob a bank these days. These people, uh -huh. yeah, it's crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, but so I just know, I've you know, talked to people in prison and people just got out of jail and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, we did like probably, probably about a year's worth of research uh, and while pitching uh, and then probably a year's worth of actually like uh, production. So it was about two, two and a half years that oh, man. Uh, they put together, yeah. And is that something you wouldn't go back to, or is that one kind of shelved, or? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I meant for Barney. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, the bank robbery thing, I would love to do. I mean, I still know all the people who robbed the banks, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's like, it's stupid answers, like, there's a lot of heist stuff on TV right now, so it's right. bad, you know? <laughs> yeah, you watch so. Heat, you gotta go rob a bank, that's just how it works, okay. right? I have a whole section of movies back here about, uh, movies about bank robbing you know oh really <laughs> yeah, let's see. we got a uh, baby driver uh dog day afternoon mm. uh trapped in paradise stockholm raising arizona point break come on Dude, Old those are awesome yeah. yeah very good selection boys so one thing that you asked everybody um who was 
participating in this is who was their Barney like growing up? So I'm curious, did you have a Barney and, and who would it have been? Of course, what am I, some kind of monster? Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, Cookie Monster was my, my guy. You know, I loved Cookie Monster. But also I have a very healthy relationship with Scrooge McDuck, you know, and I, oh, yeah. I, always, I always hesitate to put him on the list because it's not like, you know, you, you want to think of who's your Barney, you want to think of who's your best, like your first, you know, right. uh, and then Cookie Monster was sure my first, but Scrooge was something that like, I mean, I still, I, when I was living in California, uh, I went to Disneyland for 90s night and I gave the Scrooge McDuck like the biggest hug. And like right. I knew it was a person, I could feel their bones. <laughs> you know? But like I just I just thanked the stranger dressed as Scrooge McDuck for everything. You know? Right. And so it's it, there's a magic there with those sort of like early characters, you know? Yeah. I would say probably Mr. Rogers, which I think is a common yeah. one, was mine. Yeah. I loved I'll watching Mr. Rogers. I did not get Mr. Rogers when I was younger. Like, I just thought it was so boring, right? But then Morgan Neville does that documentary and then mm-hmm. Tom does that movie and then Gavin Edwards wrote a book about him. I am a huge Mr. Rogers fan now. Right. Um, <laughs> it's just, I, could, I, I just never appreciated it as a kid because like, I don't know, like I just never connected with that sort of slow pace that he did. Right. You know? Yeah, and I don't think like my kid as a kid wouldn't have watched that show. Like I, I don't think that that would work very well today, but I don't know. Yeah. It, it clicked back then for a lot of kids. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you think is just interesting or maybe didn't make it into the documentary that you would uh, like to let me know or let me, let me of the watchers know before we finish up? Yeah. I mean, like it's, it was, you know, we, we talked, we interviewed Bill Nye, the science guy. Mm-hmm. We interviewed Steve uh, Burns uh, from Blue's Clues. Yeah. But I think some of the other characters we tried to get in, like we did talk to Tinky Winky. Oh, really? Uh, you know, but uh, we, t- we talked to him on Zoom a couple of times. Uh, and then we, but he was in Europe and it just, it just didn't work. It just didn't work out. Okay. Uh, and we also interviewed, uh, I'm not sure if you know who Stick Stigley is. Oh, from Nickelodeon? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. popsicle stick. Yeah. We interviewed the stick. You know, it's like, it's got like, you know, he's, you know, the googly eyes on. Yeah. Like, and I interviewed the best question. I was like, where does hate come from? And Stick Stigley gave the best response. It was like, it was like moving, but you're listening to a stick talk about hate, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, uh, but like, you know, at the end of the day, we just thought we didn't own that character. Like, I can interview Bob West or David Joyner, the, the voice and body of Barney right. all the time, but they're not they're not being interviewed as Barney. We interviewed him as Stick Stigley, so it just didn't quite work out. But I, what I do want to mention, though, is this next documentary I'm doing uh, that we actually have a Kickstarter for right now. It's called, okay. the, it's called the House From. You go to thehousefrom.com. Uh, and it's all about what it's like to live in a famous house from like a movie or TV show. Oh, right? nice. Yeah, what's it like to live in the full house house, home a alone? Brady Bunch five. house. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we've been to the, the Friday house or can't hardly wait uh oh man Williams, you know so all these sort of houses we talked to the owner and in, in the case of can't hardly wait you know Ethan Umbre comes back to the house and you know delivers some of his lines from that movie that's awesome but it's a great it's a great doc that we're putting together and we're, we're self-releasing it ourselves okay so uh so yeah so that's the house from.com if you could Put that Absolutely. In. I will definitely get that out there. I'm very excited to see that. Maybe I'll get to talk to you again when that comes out. Yeah, hit me up. That would be awesome. Um, okay. Well, then if that's it, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I'm sure you've got some more interviews to do, but thank you so much for talking to me. I really enjoyed the series. Very informative. And uh, I learned I learned to love Barney. So thank you. Uh, good. That's uh, mission accomplished. For some reason, you look like my cousin James, and I know you're not my cousin James, but it has freaked me out the whole time. I just He's a handsome man? <laughs> is he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, this is weird. It's weird when people look like people, you know? That is weird. You could do a documentary on that, like random doppelgangers. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, why, I You know, I, my whole life, people have always said, oh, you look like, I have one of those faces that apparently I look like other people, so who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'll go ahead and get out of your hair here and uh, hopefully I will get to talk to you again soon. Sounds good. All right, thank you. See ya.